Hello my friends, it's Captain Carry here and today we're gonna be talking about a subject that's really important to me myself because I have one of those problems and we're gonna be talking about hypogonadism. So basically there is two kinds of hypogonadism. There is the primary and the secondary hypogonadism. Primary hypogonadism means your testicles have a specific problem themselves, like your testicles themselves have a problem and that's why they don't produce the sexual hormones that they're supposed to produce, specifically testosterone. Now secondary hypogonadism comes from your brain, like pituitary gland for instance since you have a problem there the wrong signals get sent to your testicles and that's why they don't produce the right amount or any amount of testosterone for that matter now the difference between primary and secondary hypogonadism as you can see is one is your testicles themselves have a specific issue and the other one your brain um, has a specific issue with sending the right signals to your testicles so this is what we're gonna be talking about we're gonna be talking about symptoms and how um, you treat this and testosterone replacement therapy and everything now if you're here for the first time on my channel don't forget to like and subscribe um we have a lot of uh, videos that you're probably going to be interested in if you're interested in anything um included in sports or fit let's get into it we have talked about what primary and secondary hypogonadism is like two years ago i had some problems with my hormone panel and i felt really bad i was feeling fatigued and i couldn't really sleep that good and i had like uh, i was losing muscle mass although i was eating in a calorie surplus and i was training even harder than I usually did because I was feeling like I'm losing some muscle. This took a couple of months. It got even worse. I went to my doctor. I told him like, yo, I have uh, all those problems. Like I can't sleep. I eat, but I'm losing muscle. I'm catabolizing like crazy and stuff like that. Yo, what is wrong with me? And he told me, uh, you're probably depressed. There you go. This is an antidepressant. I was like, no, sir, I don't feel depressed. I have a specific problem. It would be cool if we could do like a hormone panel or a blood panel. And uh, after arguing a little bit, the doctor was all right with it he still gave me the antidepressant of course i didn't take it and he told me to go do a blood panel which i did now turns out my testosterone levels were in the literal zeros and my prolactin levels were a little bit elevated um went to my doctor asked him what to do and he told me yeah we have to before we start with any therapy we have to find out what is causing this issue because if we can take care of the cause itself then maybe the issue would resolve itself by itself we did that and after months of testing and doing an mri and stuff like that i got out that i had a prolactinoma now a prolactinoma is secondary hypogonadism as far as i understand it so basically there's a small tumor that sits in your pituitary gland first of all it makes you produce more prolactin and prolactin blocks testosterone or decreases testosterone and blocks the signaling of producing testosterone in your gonads this, this is how i understood it i'm not a medical doctor so don't get your medical advice from me by all means go to your own doctor if you have any of the symptoms we're going to be talking about later we found out i had a prolactinoma and he told me like uh we're gonna first of all get your prolactin down because maybe when we get it down your testosterone will restart production which we did for a couple of months took about six months of me be, me being in the zeros of testosterone and getting my prolactins to normal until my doctor was like okay there's not going to change we're going to have to do trt now many of you heard of testosterone replacement therapy and there is a couple of ways to do it probably most well-known way of it is injecting testosterone like siphonate or ethanate or whatever people get some testosterone to inject now my doctor told me if i wanted to get an injection protocol he would give me one but i would only get an injection every two weeks and anyone here who knows about trt knows that injecting once every two weeks is such a bad idea that i probably rather go without it at all than go with this shitty protocol because you're gonna have spikes and falls in your testosterone and in your estradiol and all this stuff you're gonna be feeling like shit after five or six days and you're gonna be repeating this every two weeks which is insane the reason is doctors here in austria are really strict with testosterone it's a controlled substance it is illegal to take steroids and all of this stuff like SARMs and all that stuff is illegal even like ephedrine and stuff like that is illegal but basically it is a controlled substance and they're really like scared about giving it out for people because they might abuse it or use too much of it or whatever the second way of getting testosterone replacement therapy is through pellet they make a small incision in your glute for instance and they insert a pellet that has to be taken out every couple of months and replaced now i heard this is not a really good thing of doing it and i had heard of a lot of like adverse effects from the pellets and i was like okay and the third and the one that i went with is testosterone gel or testosterone creams it looks like this it's a pack of gel it's called testo gel and it has like 30 sachets in it and every sachet is like for one day and that's perfect because you apply one of them for one day you have 30 in a pack one month is over and then now 
Like I said, they are so strict here that I have to, I send my application once a month to my own doctor who sends it to a like upper doctor or a chef doctor, as we say here in Austria. And he tells me the yes or the no. And then each month I have to get a new receipt or a new like prescription for this. So it's really strict. You can't really go over because you have to do a lot of blood tests every couple of months. And if they see your, your testosterone is too high, then they basically take you off the regimen. Then you're fucked. Anyway, um, I started with the gel and I have read a lot of bad things about the gel so I was really skeptical in the beginning but I'm like almost a little bit longer than a year in now and I feel quite good and the thing is I was at 860 NGL testosterone before I got hypogonadism I was doing like hormone blood panels every three months for the past couple of years I do all of those crazy like diets and stuff like that like I did one meal a day for over a year I did intermittent fasting for over a year I did vegan for over a year and stuff like that so I really want to see what's going on with my body. So I knew how my testosterone looked before. Now, the first blood panel that I did after starting on Testogel, I was at 780, 790, which was really close to where I was before. Now, there is a couple of tricks that I've found out over the last year of using Testogel that helped me maximize absorption a little bit more to get back to the 900s where I was exactly before. So now I feel the same as I did before having all of those health problems. Number one you can do, so I don't know if you've seen this before, but it is called a derma roller. And basically what a derma roller does, um, I don't know if you can see it here. It has like a lot of like half a millimeter long needles on it. And basically what you do is you just go over your skin like that, punctuating your upper dermis, like the upper layer of your skin. And through that, once you apply the test soap gel, it's going to be absorbing much better. Now, be careful. It's going to be stinging because it has an alcohol base, the gel, and you are basically have like hundreds of tiny small holes in your skin. So it's going to be burning for the first minute or two after application. The second trick that I found out that is really worth it and this is about moisturizing. So basically you have done your derma rolling, you have applied the gel and after that like an hour or two after you apply moisturizer and the moisturizer helps your dry skin get back to being a little bit more moist of course because the alcohol really dries it out and dry skin doesn't have that good of an absorption like moist skin. So basically that's what you do. Increases your testosterone absorption about 15 to 20 percent. Also there is a study I'm going to link in the description down below if you want to check it out. Um, so those are two tricks that you can use to increase the absorption even a little bit more. You apply this once a day. That's basically it. Now you have to be careful with a couple of things. Uh, first of all if you have uh, a wife, a girlfriend or you are in a relationship be sure that they don't touch the skin where you have applied the testosterone before you wash it really good. It's gonna rub off on them and if it happens more often they're gonna have spikes in their own testosterone and for women that's not good at all. For children it's the same thing. Don't let them touch your application site. You're gonna be wearing a shirt after anyway and you after you wash it off you can like take your shirt off or whatever. Now what you also shouldn't do is have your pets like touch the skin or lick it or whatever. Testosterone is not good to give to your dog or your cat. I'm just saying you probably know that already but just in case. Now um, let's get into the symptoms. Basically, what kind of symptoms are there? The one that I noticed the most was fatigue. So basically, I couldn't really get out of bed in the morning. I'm a really happy person. I'm really energetic. So I'm always on my legs. and I'm always walking around here and there and doing stuff. And I'm really energetic. And I started to see that decline like drastically. My testosterone was in the zeros for almost half a year. If you haven't experienced this, you can't really imagine. The only thing that I, I could compare it to is probably depression and that's probably why my doctor thought I was depressed because I was so fatigued I didn't really want to get out of the bed. Now symptom number two catabolizing. I was losing muscle mass although I was training the same or even more than before because I wanted to like jump that hurdle I thought I had gotten to like plateau and I couldn't get through so this is why I trained more. I ate more and I started to lose muscle so this is number two. Then you have like insomnia or bad sleeping habits. You can't really go to sleep. Your um, sleep circadian rhythm is like all over the place and you don't get like the right amounts at the right time and stuff like that and you have problems falling asleep etc. Then there is like a literal depression like you feel depressed because the wrong hormone balance in your body is there and uh, that's gonna make you feel bad. Some people really get deep depression and they never find out that it's actually um, hypogonadism instead of having like a serotonin imbalance or something. This symptom was the one that actually pushed me to go to the doctor and this was panic attacks like I never 
never had panic attacks before that in my life and I had one and felt insane like I couldn't I couldn't really like get out of it by myself and it took like uh it took like some time until I, I, I was back to normal again and then one week later I had a second one and then I was like okay I can't really deal with this like that I have to go to the doctor I have to see what it is because I don't really have anything in my surrounding that is supposed to get me into panic attacks now I don't really I'm not a psychologist I don't know how they usually work but I didn't think that merry-go-round person like me should be having panic attacks in his like uh, mid-twenties right so next symptom is basically having like a sore chest puffy nipples itchy nipples or gynecomastia Gynecomastia. gynecomastia basically those people have too much estrogen or estradiol they either aromatize too much of their testosterone or they have such low testosterone that the estrogen that they have is too high and basically they start getting like female breasts to start out with like itchy nipples and then they start getting like puffier and swelling and before you know it you have breasts and now many people who are overweight have this problem because they have more estrogen in general high estrogen and basically they start building like breasts as men not good so those are some of the symptoms if you have any of them all of them or multiple of them i would go to your doctor or ask uh, to have like a hormone panel to get like a blood panel and check everything out because there could be a problem that you're not aware of and so those are the symptoms this is how you get treated for it so we have those three different methods of treatment you have this five or six symptoms that i put out there you have my own story now so you know how this actually works down and back to normal I don't have to take an AI and aromatization inhibitor most people who jump on TRT jump on too high of a dose and that's why they need either an aromatization inhibitor and they also take HCG because they don't want to lose that volumes in their gonads but other than that I don't need to do anything else but use the testo gel I'm really perfectly dialed in I'm back to the exact almost the exact same numbers of test testosterone that I had before I got to prolactinoma now I have to be careful I have to do like an MRI once a year like I said because uh, I want to see if the tumor got bigger or if it stayed the same if it gets too big we have to remove it if it can stay the same size then I don't have to remove it now I didn't know that before but prolactinomas are actually one of the most common brain tumors in males so many people might actually have a problem with testosterone through hypogonadism and they don't really know that like a small brain tumor could be uh, um, the reason for it now those tumors are not malignant so it's not actually cancer as far as I know maybe it can develop into that but as far as I know they're non malignant and they don't metastasize exercise or anything so don't be worried just uh, if you have any problems go seek medical advice i think that's it for me for today thank you guys for tuning in if you have any questions let me know in the comments down below don't forget to like comment subscribe and we're going to be having new videos once a week especially now because uh, vienna is closing in on itself again so thank you guys for tuning in take care and peace